Good morning, folks. We've got a wide range of topics today, including a little magnetic pole information update. We're watching the solar tornado depart, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com. Find the last 24 hours on our star. We're exceptionally calm and quiet. SDO eclipse season marches on. Let's zoom in to see how that plasma filament appears in 193 angstroms as it departs. Much more of the coronal particle effects visible nearby. We also have a shifty prominence in coming on the south, lower activity, and an overarching flow. We'll keep eyes on that one. Let's go to the solar wind. And first of all, we've got a bit of variability in slightly above normal range, and that has given us a touch of geomagnetic instability to go along with it, occurring last night. But much of that is due to our fiddling with the heliospheric current sheet in the interplanetary magnetic fields, which looked like they were going to start riding a 180-degree phi angle for an earthquake watch, but never sustained it, and it's back to top and bottom of the chart while we wait. During the brief attempt to hit 180 is when the Philippines did take the most notable shake of the day, by the way. Let's go next to the Australian Antarctic Ridge, where isotope analysis is revealing that the crust is spreading here to make way for a mantle portion that is not the same as the Indian and Pacific Oceans, despite being sandwiched right between them. This could be because of a random ancient mantle plume, as they hypothesize, or because maybe the crust doesn't stick on top of some of these areas as well as we'd like to think. Or maybe it has to do with the energetic particle bombardment that the region is hit with being the current location of the South Magnetic Pole, changing the isotopes having already charged up into the sea nearby. And speaking of the magnetic poles, it was quite disappointing to see the World Magnetic Model merely tweak the 2015 data last week, as opposed to releasing a full report. That will come at the end of the year, but we can tell you that the 40 kilometers per year movement that NASA reported nearly two decades ago is up to 55 kilometers per year motion or more of the North Magnetic Pole, and in 2017, it did officially cross the international date line. Bits of fun here on the 360 Interaction Rover view. Drill holes are interesting looking, cool in a way, but also kind of just like looking around parts of Arizona, to be honest. This video is linked below via the JPL. Up next, we're at New Horizons, Ultima. The final shot, and now the mystery deepens as the current model of what this thing supposedly looks like makes almost no sense at all. Almost like a disc has been warped into lobes. Hubble is up next, and 99% of the time you are supposed to be looking at the bright central thing and whatever lensing they say is warped around it, but I love looking for the galaxies that don't quite look right. Like this blue glow newt thing from Pitch Black, and the galaxy to the south which probably has the most non-homogeneous bright star production profile I've ever seen. But you guys line up by who's tallest? Last but not least there, Dark Energy Survey has come to an end. They have not found dark energy, they did not find dark matter. And Scott Doddleson, member of the survey and head of the physics department at Carnegie Mellon, said he thinks that one day someone will come along and figure this all out with no new particles or energy. That's a smart guy. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Your Fly on the Wall podcast hits the premium section in just a few hours. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.